guys, Shanti Phillips here on the brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday Shopping video today. Today the only major thing that releases is White Boy Rick. Other than that, that's really the only thing coming out today. But uh, also at the end of this video, I have a whole bunch of brand new DVD and Blu-ray reviews for some things I received to review and talk about for you guys. Some really, really cool stuff. In the comments below too, let me know though, you know, what you guys thought of the titles that I reviewed, if you guys have seen them, you know, what your thoughts of them were. But anyway though guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Target we go. And it's weird, like, I'm like the first person here or something. There, it's like only, it's like 1230. There's like not a car in here. I don't know what is going on. And then like for some reason, like in the front, there's like, there's like these carts blocking the doors. See, look, like there's like carts all in front of the doors over here. So I don't, I don't know what is going on. See, though, it's all covered over and everything. So I do not know what's going on. Yeah, I guess Target is doing some kind of, this one's doing some kind of renovation or something. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. It's, it's, it's totally abandoned here, so I don't know. And I'm going over to Walmart. It's like looking like totally abandoned too. Like, I don't know if this whole area is doing, like if maybe they had like a power outage or something. I, I'm gonna see if I can see if what's going on. Like, I don't know, it's like over here, it's just as abandoned as well. And, and it's like 12.23, like I said, it was just about 12.30 and like, I don't know, I'm not sure what's going on. Yeah, but it's the same situation. Like there's carts all in front of the door over there. So it's the same thing and like the whole parking lot's totally abandoned. So I don't know if this whole area has had, like I said, a big power outage or something. I do not know. No, but I know what's happening today. Today it's Christmas. You know, this is the first time and I think in a long time a DVD Blu-ray Tuesday, you know, was on a holiday where everything was closed. I can't think of one like this in a long time. But, you know, White Boy Rick did release today. Other than that, that was pretty much the only thing. But I knew this was going to happen, so I ended up filming this past weekend a uh, movie hunting video. Went to a bunch of different stores and stuff. So I'm going to have that, at, you know, in this video to have something to put up for you guys. But like I always say, you know, if you guys enjoy these shopping videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. I hope you guys all have a happy holidays um, you know so stay tuned for the video that I filmed this past weekend and then the um, some new movie reviews and then new DVD and Blu-ray reviews you know so stay tuned for the video into the quality resale store we go so we'll take a look and see what's new in here all the things in here are $2.99 each for the DVDs or four for $9.99 it's I haven't been in here in probably like I don't know it's like a little over a month or two in the past I found a couple like out of print things in here like really randomly it hasn't been I haven't found anything really that great though in quite a while but every so often though mixed in here you can come across some really decent stuff I think like the most ex like the well, rarest thing I found in here was like this Anchor Bay title like this early Christian Bale film that he was in but other than that though I haven't found anything that different. This is a weird one. I never actually watched this. They, they made a sequel to Single White Female. They made a lot of like around this time when this was made. I think this is like 2005, I think. They were making a lot of like direct-to-video sequels to some like older titles. But you never see this one too often. And also it's a, you know, Hollywood video edition here of that one. I always love to find, you know, the rental versions of things. Here's another weird show you never hear about. Greg the Bunny. I think this is one of those things that only lasted for like a couple episodes when this was on. But like I said, just going to kind of go through here and see anything different that I can come across in here today. But we'll see if we can find anything. But in here though, there definitely are some uh, different things I haven't seen in the past in here. Like um, you never see this very often at all, Dr. Katz. I, I believe I have this one already. but. Um, this is pretty obscure one to come across. I used to watch this a lot when this was on and had this like interesting kind of crazy uh, kind of animation that this had on this one. But like I said though, there's been some definitely some real random different things in here today that I haven't seen in a while. So they definitely have gotten in newer things. So the past couple of times I've been in here, it was kind of like the same stuff for a while. But they've definitely kind of changed out the stuff and put in a whole bunch of new things as far as I can tell. So I've definitely come across some stuff. One thing I did find that I think I'm going to get was Amityville 4, The Evil Escapes. This is one, I don't believe I have this one. I think this is like one of the few of the Amityville sequels that I don't have. Most of the later sequels, like I think um, 
after part three that you know because one through three uh, shout factory released under screen factory line but like all the other ones after that i believe most of those ones are out of print and kind of uh, rare to come across and like, like i said I, I don't believe that i have this one this is one hopefully sometime gets a blu-ray release i always kind of like this movie and here's a show that somehow i never saw any episodes of in my life buffy the vampire slayer i don't know how i never saw any of this but somebody like colored in every part like they like highlighted it or something yeah it's like all highlighted over this but they have like i believe most of the seasons of this here i don't know if they ever put these on blu-ray or not i, I don't know for sure but in here too this is kind of an interesting one this is like the lenticular dvd cover for cabin fever they had like a was there i think there might have been a lenticular one as well for the blu-ray of this this is definitely an obscure one to come across as well like i said there's definitely been some interesting different kind of stuff in here like a bunch of these dr quinn medicine women's in here but definitely has been a whole lot more interesting things in here that i've seen in quite a long time but look through here and found a couple of different things i'm going to get though so yeah they definitely was good coming in here because they definitely have changed it out and gotten a bunch of new things in there though i tried to see if i could find you know that four for ten dollars thing but i didn't really find anything else you know to get to that many but in there though like i said i got that amityville for the evil escapes and i'm pretty sure like i said that i don't have this one and uh, most of these are really really rare to come across like the the ones after part three and i also picked up in there this you know each of these were three dollars and this one was actually a decent price for this and i actually watched this season when this was on like i only watched like season one and two of this when this was on maybe the third one but um i picked up the uh survivor season two and you know for some reason i was like oh yeah I'll just get that for three dollars and it's online it's like fifteen dollars or something so another one you don't see this season too much you see like the first season and then that like random like uncensored first season disc one you know a lot as well but not this one but you know like I said there definitely was a whole lot of different things in there you know throughout there that you know and some other out of print stuff that I already had like Dr. Katz and everything and they had like Mean Girls the DVD but the Blu-ray of that surprisingly is out of print and like really rare and obscure to come across like this if you guys ever come across the uh, Blu-ray of that it's definitely one to pick up like I said, though, you know, one of those stores, you know, I go in there like every month or so, and sometimes you find some slightly different stuff. Into the video rental store we go. And this place is pretty cool. It's an old school video rental store. This is actually one of the only video rental stores that I know of at all out here. When I first moved out here, of course, there was Blockbuster still. Of course, those are all have been gone. You know, in like uh, Midwest and everything, they still have family videos, which are doing really well. One day I hope to be in that area and actually get to go to one of them and, you know, film in there and show you guys it but in here though they have a decent amount of stuff for sale a lot of this stuff is like five dollars and three dollars they don't usually have the dvd and the blu-ray in them if they're like combos they have like a thing crossed out that says which one they have in here but i actually went to this store years back because it was originally at a different location and then it moved to a place that has like some kind of like food and stuff in it as well a lot of that i've noticed is like some video rental stores have food and stuff they sell them as well but in here though they have a pretty decent selection too of new releases and everything but just a really cool place to come and check out every so often into the family dollar we go in here though they always have like these like you know uh, sleeve things in here they're all like two dollars they're the ones that like don't have the um case or anything usually from what i have found out in the past like a lot of the ones in here i've seen like they had like the thing around them like they were the red box rental copies like x rental copies like in sometimes in the past i've seen that what they what they were but there's some really random things in here like this movie here k11 which i think was directed by um christian stewart's mother it was kind of a cool movie i have this one already but this was actually a cool movie you never hear anyone talk about but yeah see here's one of them like black november it has this uh thing around the ring around the disc and here for this uh, full moon release of Ooga Booga, this one, this is another one of the rental copies. But sometimes you can find like random different things in here. It's a lot of the same stuff, like a lot of After the Sunset. Some of these um, four volume sets like Felix the Cat. But there are some random things in here that I found in the past that are actually some out of print stuff. But of course, like I said, you're only getting the discs themselves. But I'll look through here and just to see if there's anything different in here. But they have a few of the actual case ones here, like Dear John, uh, Three Days to Kill. Into the Shopportunity Thrift Store 
we go. And in this thrift store though, all right over here they used to have a huge selection of VHS tapes and I guess in the last month or two they got rid of pretty much most of them. There's just a few of them on the bottom here. This is one of those ones though I come to like maybe every two months or so, but it doesn't really change out too often. This is one of those ones, you know, there's some thrift stores where you go to them and then you see the same exact stuff for months on end and sometimes even like a year or two the same stuff is here. This is kind of one of those ones where it can be like the same things you see again and again and again that like are just always here and I've seen some weird bootlegs and things here at this location in the past but nothing really that different and a lot of times it's like super common things at this location and you don't really see too many blu-rays I think I only saw like one or two of them in here but there really were not many at all but it's just still one of these ones I like to check out every so often but like I said as you can see there really aren't many VHS tapes here left at all anymore into the good will we go yeah it looks like in here they have all the movies on the top shelf in here they used to have them over here on the side but now they're all in here and look through in here and see if there's anything else different in here today the one thing with goodwills though i've mentioned this in the past is quite often though they like i've heard they scan the price and everything so they usually know you know what everything is worth for the most part some of the times it's funny it's not everything seems to have a tag on them. I think they're all kind of the same price in here. This is one movie that Andy Kaufman was in. I always, you know, love this movie. It's like a really, really underrated, like super strange movie. If you guys have seen this one, though, let me know what you thought of it below, but I always absolutely love this movie so much. This Man vs. Food one, I can't, I can't remember if I have this season or not of this. I'm pretty sure I do. You know, this show came back like a, two years ago with another host. I think the new host is decent. I, 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 I still watch the show, but I really, when this first started with Adam Richman, though, I watched this one all the time. Like I said, though, I don't know for sure what the price of everything is in here. I'm pretty sure they're usually like 2 or $3 or something like that for the most part. But like back there with the books over there is where the movies used to be. But I've noticed though, a lot of the locations, though, have been doing, um, you know, putting them on the top like this, on top of the clothes and everything. This is funny, these are um, Australian releases here for Vander Plump Rules. That's kind of funny to see these from these Via Vision, um, you know, Via Vision uh, Australian releases in here of those. Like I said though, just pretty much going through all this stuff, seeing if there's anything interesting. It's kind of rare too to be in here, honestly, when they're not playing music. You know, that's sort of a rare thing. Usually there's blasting music and everything in here. <laughs> you gotta be real careful putting these things back in here because they're really tight on the shelf. But yeah, not looking like anything in here too different. This one though, I remember when these first came out, Steve Odenkirk was like behind these who did uh, Kung uh, Fu, you know, no, no, Kung Pao Enter the Fist, which I loved. And I remember they were like talking for years about they're making the sequel and they never ended up doing it. But, um,. I remember when these came out, these were such a big thing. They made these for so many different movies. They were kind of fun, though, and you never, ever hear about these anymore. But they were like, when they first came out, I remember, like, you always were seeing things about them and people were talking about them. They were kind of like, like almost like viral type things before they were really posting stuff like crazy online and, you know, YouTube and all that stuff existed. These were kind of like... The, sort of like something that now would have been like a viral kind of thing but like I said just looking through here and not looking like anything too different in here today though but I always like to check in these places every so often because you never know you can sometimes find some different stuff yeah so I ended up buying that it was uh, three dollars and that was like you know with the tax and everything included I, I for life of me I can't remember if I have this season or not I know I have the first season and I have Man vs. Food Nation which was the one that like came back like a couple of years back when he came back for a little while, but I don't, you know, believe I had this one, but I, I just was not 100% sure though, so I just got it, because I just can't remember though if I do or don't. And you don't see these as often on TV as much anymore, since like I said, they're playing the new version of the show with a new host. Into FYE we go. <laughs> And the main section I always like to check when I first come in here is the new arrivals section, where it's the stuff that people recently brought in and sold. That's when Dennis the Menace, hopefully someday that comes to Blu-ray. Always really love that film. They did have one out of print thing in here, and that was Drop Dead Fred, but that one released on a region-free Blu-ray release. So if you guys are interested in that movie, definitely get the region-free one. 
as it has like deleted scenes on there and tons of features. Such a great film though, and that you know that one's in widescreen as well. But I also always check the horror section and like kind of like what I always do is I like to check you know it has like um, the red tabs on the back on the front of the t uh, the discs that say uh, used. So I always check that to see. And every so often I found some interesting things in here. Always cool though that they carry the Scream Factory titles in here, as well as the Arrow video releases. So this is a really great place if you guys are trying to find those ones in person. You can always find them in here. This is one, I always was looking for this at Walmart, and I never saw this. It was so funny how they had uh, Jason on the front of this, but you know, Jason wasn't even in the first film, so it was kind of weird they put him on the slipcover. And they have the Halloween 3 steelbook in here. So really, like I said, really is a great place to come if you're trying to find the Arrow and Scream Factory titles, you know, in person. So definitely always cool to see those ones in here. Now, before we get to the brand new DVD and Blu-ray reviews, I did see a couple films this past weekend. Now, the first one I saw was Aquaman. You know, and that movie's gotten, like, some really mixed reviews and everything. Um, you know, it, I think it's one of the, the better of the recent, you know, DC Universe films. You know, but I think still my favorite of all of them has been, you know, Wonder Woman. I thought that was, like, a really, really well-done film. And, you know, this film is the origin story of Aquaman. And, like, it plays out the movie more like a, um, kind of like a comic book cartoon, just the way it plays, because it's got some really goofy kind of aspects to it. It's really over the top, and it's, you know, it's one of the ones, too, that's pretty much all set in, like, like probably, like, 80% of the movie is, like, in a, you know, digital universe, because so much, you know, much of it is underwater, and, like, the way they did and everything. It's kind of how I feel like if they made a live-action Little Mermaid, I feel like, you know, because so much underwater scenes of that. I feel like that would probably be kind of how it would look a little bit. That's what I'm kind of thinking because I know they've, they've been talking for years about doing, you know, the, like a Disney's version of the live action Little Mermaid. But I thought the movie, though, you know, there was some, it was one of those things I didn't think it was like boring or anything like that. It was a fun film. It like, some of it though, the kind of like what was happening with the story and everything just seemed a little bit confused and everything like just some of how things were flowing in the movie but you know I I thought you know Jason Momoa did a you know good job as Aquaman it just wasn't a hundred percent perfect it still I thought was a, a watchable film let me know in the comments though what you guys thought of the movie uh, the other one I saw was the new Jennifer Lopez film second act it's basically though you know her character had worked at like a um, kind of a place like a like a super kind of marketplace it was sort of like like a Walmart kind of place that had like lots of different things for sale and everything and she was one of the the main managers of the place and she really thought she was going to get this brand new job is like kind of like the the marketing department a much higher level job at the at the company and she ends up getting the not getting the job and this other guy who who never even worked there before he got the job because he ended up having you know college experience and everything and she's like telling you know Lisa Renner uh, Lisa Remini's character how you know who she works with how she just wishes that she didn't have to have all this book smart and everything to get further in her, her career and everything and she feels kind of like she's stuck so Lisa Remini's son ends up faking this resume online for Jennifer Lopez, and she ends up getting this job at a high, you know, like really high profile company and this, this great position and everything because the resume was faked. And it's kind of about her, you know, working there and kind of trying to cover up the fact that she didn't actually go to all these places and she gets into all kinds of situations and everything. I thought that it was actually, you know, a fun, just like a, you know, just a sweet kind of fun film. And the last one I saw was Robert Zemeckis' new film, uh, you know, uh, Welcome to Marwin. And, you know, that movie was based on a documentary, and I really have to see the documentary. It sounds, like, really interesting, you know, and it's based, like I said, it's based on a true story. I thought this one, though... Um, there, there, I don't know. It, that one was really not perfect. There was things about it though that I did like, you know, and it it, it it did have some kind of sad aspects to it as well. But it's basically though about Steve Carell's character, and this is a true story that happened. You know, he was his character was. Um, you know, like I said, it's based on a true person, was beat up by terribly by these guys, like this, you know, terrible what happened, and he had all these uh, traumatic brain injuries from it and ended up forgetting things about his past, and his character was an artist, and he wasn't able to draw anymore or anything like that. So his kind of way of dealing with what had happened and, you know, to him was since he couldn't draw anymore and he didn't, you know, lost most of his memories of before this happened, he was taking pictures, these super realistic lifelike pictures of these um, dolls that he had and it was all through like the war era and everything and he's taking all these like super you know advanced photos of him it was kind of like about um 
and all the car the dolls were people that he knew in his past and everything, you know. And it was from the same writer of you know who did Edward Scissorhands, and you know who wrote Edward Scissorhands and who wrote um, uh, the Adams Family movie. Like I, I don't know, I I did like that movie, but it wasn't one hundred percent perfect though. Like it was. Some of it just didn't totally 100% work, but I did. It still is another one, though, I think is still worth watching, just not perfect. Like, if you guys have seen it, see all any of those movies, though, in the comments below, let me know what you guys thought of them. I'd love to hear your thoughts. But now, stay tuned for a whole bunch of brand new uh, DVD and Blu ray reviews. And the first one I got here is from Arrow Video. Just want you guys to know that this one is available. It's a movie here called The Forbidden Photos of a Lady Above Suspicion. This is essentially, though, about this one who's going for a walk on the beach one night, and this guy ends up coming up to her, and he's kind of, like, lurking around really weird, and he's, like, saying that he knows that her husband, you know, had killed somebody, and this woman's husband is kind of missing at periods of time, and she doesn't exactly know where he is at some of the times, and, you know, he says to her, you know, if you uh, do exactly what I say, and there's all these things that he's saying to do, if you do these things, I'm not going to tell anybody and you know you know you're, no one's gonna find out about you know, your husband killed anybody or any of that kind of stuff and it's essentially about this you know what she kind of goes through with this guy and all this kind of stuff this has on here too a uh, music by Eno Marconi who I always really love the music that he does so really really great music on this one really great transfer as well because it has on here a brand new 2k restoration from the original camera negative by Arrow Films it has on here though a commentary track on here with uh, uh, Kat Ellinger who's the author and editor-in-chief of Diabolic uh, magazine has a brand new uh, newly edited documentary on the film uh, thing on here called the forbidden soundtrack of the big three a new appreciation of music uh, of the music of forbidden photos and uh, 70s Italian cinema by musician and soundtrack collector uh, lovely John uh, forbidden uh, lady a Q and a with actress one of the actresses on here from 2016 fantastic films uh, festival it has on here uh, English and Italian uh, theatrical trailers, as well as the um, uh, version of the film in Italian and English. And inside of here as well, it has a booklet that has pictures from the movie and kind of facts and all that kind of stuff about that. But really interesting movie here if you guys have not seen this one. Like I said, just want you guys to know that this one is available from uh, Arrow Video. And the next one I got here is from Universal, and this one stars uh, Tevin Hart and Tiffany Haddish. It's a movie here called uh, Night School. This has on here the extended cut. I think the extended cut is like six minutes longer. It also includes in here a, a gag reel, um, a bunch of different featurettes on the movie as well. But this is actually a really funny movie. It's essentially, though, about Kevin Hart's character. In the very beginning of this movie, he's taking his, like, SAT test to, you know, finish and graduate from high school. And, like, he ends up getting embarrassed by, like, Taron Killen's character. And he, like, kind of is, like, messing with him and everything. And he ends up just getting up and saying, I, you know what, I don't want to do this. He starts not caring about, about high school and, and going to college or anything. So he just gets up and quits and never finishes school never finishes this test or anything. So essentially, though, you know, he ended up actually doing okay, and he got, ended up getting a job working at this barbecue place where they sold barbecues, and he, throughout the years, he went up and up and up, and he was at the point where he was, like, the manager, and the owner was going to end up leaving the business to him because he was getting ready to retire, but that night to kind of celebrate that he was going to, like, be owning this place, he, him and his girlfriend there, he ends up <laughs> accidentally, you know, blowing the place up because he, like, leaves the gas thing on, and the whole place gets screwed up and destroyed, and there goes that whole thing so then he doesn't know what he's going to do and you know his girlfriend doesn't know anything about how he never you know finished high school or any of that it was kind of something he like was really embarrassed about and kind of kept quiet and he doesn't know what he's going to do he doesn't know how he's going to you know because he wants to propose to his girlfriend he doesn't know how he's going to pay the bills or anything so and he can't get any other jobs it's like higher paying because he didn't finish high school so his one friend's like, listen, I can get you this really good job where I'm working at this firm and everything, but you have to finish high school. And that's that we'll let you do it if you finish high school. So he ends up having to go secretly to night school. And Tiffany Haddish is his night school teacher and teacher, and he has all kind of like awkward kind of problems with her. And um, Taryn Killen, the, the one who bullied him in the beginning of this movie, he's now the principal of this school. So he's kind of trolling him, trolling Kevin Hart, giving him all kinds of problems and not really wanting him to go to night school and kind of wants him to fail so he doesn't get this GED and kind of wants to screw everything up for him. It's just a really, really fun movie. I would definitely recommend you guys check this one out. The next one here is from Sony, and this is um starring you know stars Denzel Washington, and this is actually the first sequel he's ever done. They they, they talked about that a lot when they were promoting this movie, and this is the uh, Equalizer two, and it says there is no equal. And I really really liked the first Equalizer movie, which you know Chloe Grace uh, Morris was in that movie as well. I thought that was actually a really crazy like intense movie, kind of a different movie for Denzel Washington. You know, of course it was a remake. 
the original film. I don't know for sure if I ever saw the original movie or not. But essentially, though, uh, this is basically, though, um, about Denzel Washington's character. And you find out in the first movie about, like, kind of where he worked before and what kind of stuff he did, like, on undercover kind of things in the opera. He, he kind of, like, he was, like, with this group and everything. Kind of, that's why he had all these skills and everything, but he kind of had stepped away from all that. And in this one, though, he's kind of like a vigilante. And essentially, like, he's going and, like, he's trying to find, in the very beginning, he's trying to find this girl who was kidnapped. And then he's, like, you know, rescuing people. He's not asking for money or anything like that. It's just kind of like he's trying to stop the bad in the world and, like, you know, kind of save people and help people and everything. But what, what ends up happening, though, is um, someone that he actually knows, that he's very good friends with, that he you know, used to work with years ago, Melissa Leo's character, she ends up getting uh, kidnapped. And he has to try and track her down. And it becomes this whole thing of him trying to find her. Super, super intense movie. Like I said, really, really like crazy all the stuff that's going on on here. This has on here, though, a whole bunch of different features. It has the uh, 11 uh, deleted and extended scenes on here. A bunch of different featurettes. It also has the retribution mode with Denzel Washington and, and the director, Anthony Fuqua, which has watch uh, Equalizer 2 with Denzel and Anthony as they take you through their favorite adrenaline-filled action scenes in the very first uh, sequel together, exclusive comedy and conversation so that's on here as well as one of the features uh, the next ones here are from uh, Fox and they sent over these ones that you guys know about and the first one here is one I was really interested in seeing it's a movie called uh, the darkest minds this is like a movie where something had happened in the world and uh, most of the kids had ended up dying. Something of some kind of a something happened to them and um, there were certain kids though that survived and these kids had these certain type of powers and they were like you know, categorized in colors, and I think it was like um, blue was like safe, and these people could kind of like move things with their minds, and then like and they had like they went up and up with the colors, and if you were a certain type of colors, they ended up you know supposed to have been terminated because they could basically like um, control your mind and make you think what they wanted, and they and then they were kind of considered really dangerous, and they kind of put all the kids together in this camp where they were kind of keeping them there and kind of studying them, and like and it was like basically followed this one girl though who ended up um being the one that was considered dangerous and was supposed to be terminated but she was able to control and change the you know the guy's thoughts so she ended up being putting list on the list i think is green so she wasn't destroyed or killed or anything and it's like years later and it's like her and she just has been found out and it's kind of her you know getting um escaping with Mandy Moore's character who is there to kind of help her and she's kind of works with this group to kind of help people that in kind of like that's essentially that's what it is but essentially though it's kind of like her along with these other kids on the run and then there was a cool scene in here too there was like 50 minutes in this cool abandoned mall and everything I didn't think this movie was amazing or anything but it was kind of a cool you know like um thing about people who have these kind of certain type of powers and stuff like that but it has on here though uh, remember uh, a but look beyond uh, Ruby and Liam's last kiss it has an original animatronic on here um, animatic on here that's you know what they would do when they were shooting the film like the animatic before they got to the finished stages of the film has a gag reel on here some character profiles storyboard to screen comparison uh feature commentary as well on this release this one i had never heard of this show and i was watching some of these and this is actually an interesting show it's here called uh the resident and this is the complete uh first season of the show here this is basically though about this guy who comes to this hospital where um it's his first you know i was looking online too and they said the term is technically um intern is another term of it because he's you know it's he's just out of medical school this is the first um you know place where he's been it's a hospital job that he's gotten but he's there kind of you know to work his way up to become a full-fledged doctor but you have to do like his residency first and he goes there and he has to work for the the main guy that he works for who is kind of his um boss who's kind of training him and everything and he he kind of is giving him a lot of grief and um he's there essentially to try and prove himself and you know he comes across with some stumbles in the very beginning and also there's a whole big problem going on at this hospital because the head doctor who is the head surgeon there he is starting to kind of fall apart he is um he's having like these the shakes are going on he's having some stuff happening with him and he's accidentally killed some patients and he's talked the other doctors into you know um covering up for him and saying oh it was they they had a heart conditions in the past and everything so he's falling apart and the one that he the the new 
um, resident who just came there, he's there kind of having all kinds of problems with him because he's like, you know, knows that he's messing up. And there's all kinds of stuff when they, people have to pretend to do surgeries for this head uh, surgeon because it's, it's actually a really interesting show. One of the better of these kind of like um, uh, medical kind of TV shows that I've seen. But like I said, this has the complete uh, first season here of this. And also, I just want you guys to know that this one is available if you guys were interested. And this is the Carrie... Um, uh, Carrie Russell's show here, the, the Americans, and this is the complete final series, uh, you know, final season of the show here. This has on here uh, deleted scenes, gag reel, and an insider's look on this one. The next one here is from um, Magnolia uh, uh, Home Entertainment. This is a documentary on Joan Jett, and this is uh, Joan Jett's uh, bad reputation. And in here, it also includes some of these, um, uh, you know, pics in here that you guys can pop out. That's kind of cool. You know, Joan Jett was from uh, the band The uh, Runaways, and she also has done a lot of solo music as well. Also has acted. She was in, like, um, Big Driver, and they actually they had clips, too, of a movie that she did I never saw before with uh, Michael, Michael J. Fox, which I have to see. I don't even know if that's out on Blu-ray or DVD or anything, but it looked really kind of interesting. It's, I think it was, like, the first thing she acted in at the time, but she's popped in some movies here and there. She's actually a really good actress as well. This is essentially, though, about her... When she was starting out, I think she was like 14 when she started, 14 or 15. And they also did a film about her with Christian Stewart um, a couple years back called The Runaways. I never actually saw that. I need to see that movie. But essentially, though, this is um, about her starting out in the band The Runaways, which was a, at the time, it was like one of the first, like, female, all-female rock bands. There was like not really anything like that. It was also younger teen girls, so it was very different. Not the kind of music that people were expecting at the time. And it kind of goes through how she started and how she kind of was found out and how the Runaways were put together and kind of all the things that they went through some of their kind of problems. And then it goes through Joan Jett's life, you know, showing, you know, some of the stuff that she acted in and then through her later years and through current time and everything. It's just a very, very well put together documentary on her and the Runaways and her life and great interviews with a lot of rock historians and other rock musicians and all kinds of stuff in here. Like Iggy Pop is in here getting talked to. Lots and lots of stuff, but a really well put together documentary. Has on here, though, a theater performance of Bad Reputation and Fresh Start. Um, as well as um, sound check for Bad Reputation, Fresh Start, some behind the scenes at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony, ceremony as well as music videos on this one. And the next ones I got here, I'll have a link below where you guys can order these ones for the best price. And this movie here is from um, uh, Red Hound Films. It's a movie called The Farm. I don't want to ruin too much about this movie. I got to try and like not say too much because I didn't know much at all about this one going into this. And it is amazing. It's one of those movies though that I feel like is destined to be like a cult classic. It really, it has a vibe too to me of like a lost like 70s, like late 70s, early 80s film. And it's like the way it's shot and everything, the look of this. And it's essentially though about this couple who are driving through the mountains and they're going to um they kind of just want to stay out in the woods like and go camping and stuff like that or like in a cabin and they stop off in this weird gas station this guy tells them oh there's these um you know there's some cabins this guy rents out these cabins you guys can stay there and they're there and it's like a really weird abandoned place but there's cars everywhere but there's like nobody around and the guy who owns it it's kind of like talking their ear off and kind of like bothering them and um they end up that night, though, getting um, kidnapped. And, you know, they wake up, and the one girl ends up waking up in this cage, and the other guy's in the cage in a different area as well. And essentially, though, it's something is going on, and everyone there that kidnaps them is wearing these animal masks. And they're doing something to these people here, you know, <laughs> on this farm. And these farmers are doing something weird, and these people are kind of, like, taking the place of something else. You know, and that's all I want to say, because I did, I did not know much about this at all going into this. But it is one of the, the most craziest out there odd movies I've seen in years. And I, I don't know. I, I honestly really, really got into this. And the kidnappers, too, are not talking. They're all, like I said, they're all in these animal masks. And it's just very creepy. And it's just like the whole concept of this is super creepy. But definitely check this out. If you guys have seen this one, let, leave me know, let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of this one. But like I said, don't want to say too much. I don't really want to ruin much. Next one here is from uh, Blue Fox Films, uh, Blue Fox Entertainment. I have a link where you guys can order this one as well below. This is a movie here called uh, Sol Solace. And this is about this um, this um, astronaut who's ended up in this escape pod. 
and he's trapped in there and it's basically like kind of like something has gone really wrong on it and he's like bumped his head and doesn't totally remember exactly what has happened. He doesn't know exactly how he ended up in this escape pod exactly or what's going on and he's talking to somebody on Earth who's trying to help them and it's kind of like all the thing is all about him on space and like the other astronaut that's with him is dead and something happened to him. And the person he's talking to, too, he's, like, really confused because he's like, I don't know who this person is that I'm talking to. Who is this? What exactly is going on? And this person is saying, listen, you know, this is who you're talking to, and I'm here to help you. I'm going to help you get out of this situation. Now you need to do exactly what I say. And, like, he, it's essentially, though, him trying to survive because this thing is going to get ready to crash. And it's kind of like him trying to go, go through the whole thing about having to get out of this situation at the same time trying to figure out exactly too that there just seems something like something weird is going on but this is a pretty interesting uh, science fiction film here and the next one here was one I saw I saw a lot of trailers for this in theaters so I was really interested in seeing this I think this is what it was like one of those like event kind of showings where they had like one or two different showings of this and it's a documentary on MIA who did music that you know like the music that was in the trailer for um you know um uh, Pineapple Express and a bunch of different movies and uh, you know she had a lot of things that went wrong you know um, with the Super Bowl when she flipped off with the Super Bowl performance and they talk about a lot of that in this in the, near the end of this documentary and this is all it's what it's basically called um my Ta Ma Tang um, M A A uh, M I A I have a link below though you know the, I have it all spelled below correctly so I'm saying it correct but this is a documentary though on M I A and it's all through footage that she shot growing up and then through cur current times as well but when, ever since she was a teenager she was filming uh docu you know filming footage of like her family and her making music and the people that she had worked with and um you know uh, diplo she worked with and that was kind of what launched her career doing the music that she was doing and it's kind of all about her um family who had left um you know sri, 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 sri lanka and about kind of her not really knowing much about where she came from and kind of wanting to go there and kind of experience like the life that she could have lived if she grew up there and you know lived there through her life and it's kind of an interesting documentary though all about that and then about the music that she was making and about the controversy and like I said of course the Super Bowl thing which really was a bad thing that what happened there and that whole thing and there was you know it was, they had, and she actually had footage of afterwards like right after you know with the um the head of the NFL coming up to her and stuff too when she ran out and so it was it was she had footage of everything so it was really well put together though with all the kind of footage and her going back and her you know coming up with this, the music and kind of talking about the music you know talking about making the music videos and everything on here has on here though uh, previously unseen footage from MIA's first performance behind the scenes on here of uh, sun showers some Q&A with MIA and the director on this one but this is a really really interesting documentary here the next ones here are from Via Vision and these are really cool and the, and these ones I've never actually uh, saw before in the past and these are the uh, outer limits here and these are in two volumes uh, volume one which includes uh, season one through four and uh, outer limits volume two that includes season five through seven now um, these ones are totally region free these are Australian releases but these ones you know you can watch these ones in the US without any problem or anything like that so you don't have to have an all-region DVD or Blu-ray player or anything like that. So if you're in the U.S., uh, you have no problem playing these ones at all. But I, like I said, I never saw these shows before. I was looking into them, and they originally aired on Showtime in America, you know, in the U.S. And um, I, and then, like, uh, Sci-Fi Channel went and um, brought them, the show back, I think, for the very last season in here. And they, you know, they're... Um, more, way more adult versions can, of the original show because they have in here like adult language and nudity and all that kind of stuff. So it's a very different show. Like I said, I knew nothing about this one. I think it aired, they aired like reruns and stuff like that on sci-fi and they were like edited versions of the show so like if i ever did see them in the past those are the ones i would have seen but i didn't have showtime until after i believe this show ended and it and it went from i think 1995 or 96 to like 2001 or 2002 something like that but i was watching through a bunch of these ones and they have a whole bunch of different you know uh guest stars in here some of the ones that are on here are like um uh ryan reynolds uh ryan felipe uh leonard nimoy heather graham neil patrick harris kim cattrall uh Aaron 
Eric McCormick, Howie Mandel, Ron Perman, um, uh, and then in the uh, Volume 2 set it has uh, Malcolm McDowell, uh, Molly Ringwald, Stacey Keach, uh, see some of the other people, Margot Kidder, Jerry Bu Gary Busey, Ralph Macchio, Carrie Ells, uh, Meatloaf, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Charles Charlton Heston, so a really great, um, you know, actors in this one, and it's really cool to have these all released together, because like I said, I had never seen these ones in the past, I'll show you guys a little, little look, though, at the back of them and everything, but they're actually a really fun show, and they're all done in, if you guys don't know, in like science fiction, horror type, um, um, mainly on science fiction, but they have like horror kind of elements to them and everything and I always really love uh, anthology shows so it was really cool to watch through these and I've been watching through a bunch of different ones on here and it was cool too since I had never seen any of these in the past you know when it comes to like anthologies though it's like some of my favorites have always been like um you know uh, monsters that was one of the ones that's really fun to watch and of course like the one that I grew up watching as a kid afraid of the dark but I, I anything like these kind of things like this I always really really like so really cool to have all these ones together here in this really cool set two different sets here like I said these ones are totally uh, region free so you guys can watch these ones in America without any problems at all or anything and I have a link below to ViaVision's website and this one here and I don't know where this originally airs I know I'd never seen this and it stars um Ron Livingston, you know, who I always think of from uh, Office Space. And it's a show here called uh, Louder Milk, and this is the complete uh, first season of this. And this one is region-free as well, so you guys can watch this one on all U.S. players. And, of course, if you're in Australia, since it's an Australian release, it will play in Australia as well. But um, this is one um, that's, you know, from um, the Farley Brothers. Well, I think it's from uh, Peter Farley or one of the, the Farley brothers, but then they both have directed episodes on it. And it's their kind of humor, though. It's that kind of like um, something about Mary kind of humor. And Ron Livingston's character is a recovering alcoholic who teaches um, a, um, a, a kind of like an AA kind of meetings. But he's like kind of really negative and um, he kind of tells it as it is. And he's kind of gives people all kind of problems. And he has like issues with people and he's kind of like argumentative and everything. And he's having problems with the at the church with the um the um the pastor at the church or the priest of the church you know he's like arguing with him all the time about the way he's working and and it's it's just essentially though about him trying to um help people even though he's like kind of argumentative and get problematic and everything he's still really trying to help people and help people you know be drug free and help them through these meetings and everything and it's kind of all about this like the stuff that he goes through and him trying to keep himself in order as well and the the, the troubles that he goes through in life it's actually a really funny show like i like i said i had never saw any of this one i don't know 100 percent you know certain where this one airs in america or anything but really really fun show and the last one here is from uh turbine media and this is a german release this is also region free, so you guys can watch this one in America. You know, it's all I checked it in my you know uh, U.S. Blu-ray player, and it played perfectly fine. So this one has no region lock on this, and this is uh, the Six Million Dollar Man, the complete series here. And this one doesn't have a uh, U.S. Blu-ray release, so you know it's really cool to have the whole series here together in this set. And I will say too, um, they did Turbine Media did a great job on the transfers on these; like they look absolutely amazing. And this is a show I saw this one here and there when this originally you know when this was being rerun on the sci-fi channel so i saw a couple episodes of the show here and there and then also there was like the um bionic man i think it was bionic man unless i'm mixing that up i think it might have been the bionic bionic woman they were doing a lot of kind of similar shows like this and this is basically about a guy who was in an uh, accident and um you know had like lost his legs and he was like all messed up and he was brought and kind of saved by giving like these bionic arms and like um the kind of like um bionic um uh, legs as well and he kind of has to work for the government and he has to go on kind of missions and stop bad guys and stuff like that it's a very very fun show and really cool to have this all together in here and i'll show you guys a little look inside you have um disc one through six which has up through th season three uh, and then disc 7 through 12, which goes all the way from, uh, continues on season 3 up through uh, season 5 as well. And also has some on here, some um, TV films as well on this one. It has three different t TV films as well as the pilot episode or pilot movie of the uh, show here. And here's a look, look inside at the discs. And also they have a like a um, a file on here, which is you know this is in German though, but it tells you the um, the episode title itself is in English though, and it has you know 
all the episode guides and has like um, kind of like um, pictures from the show and it goes through all the different seasons and everything in here. So really, really cool release here. Like I said, just one of the guys know that this one was available from uh, Turbine Films and really cool to have these ones all in uh, HD. And like I said, um, as far as I know, they're not in, in released at all in the U.S. on Blu-ray. Now the next one here is Region 2 Locked. This is a U.K. release. This is from uh, Signature Entertainment. So you guys would have to have an all-region DVD player to watch this one or be in, you know, the Region 2, uh, you know, uh, region code. Now this movie is um, uh, here is called Secret Santa. This is uh, from the Fright Fest Presents line. This one also stars um, Drew Lynch, which was cool to see him acting in this. You know, he was the uh, comedian. Uh, he's on, like, a couple seasons back on America's Got Talent. He did a really, really good job in this movie. This is a really crazy Christmas film. This is essentially, though, about a group, you know, this whole family that gets together for Christmas. And it's kind of like um, something ends up happening and like everyone's going like, oh, it's really hot. I'm feeling really strangely hot. And like something is making uh, some of the family members go absolutely nuts. And like uh, one thing ends up happening and someone, someone ends up dying. And it's this, basically, though, about the entire family going absolutely insane. This is from the, the director who directed, um, uh, you know, uh, Jason Goes to Hell. So this is like his first film in a long time. He did a really good job on this. And it's just a insane movie about something happening because of something in the house, you know, and you find out more and more about what's going on, why. But like little by little, some of the family members start going nuts. Somebody ends up dying. That's really early on in the movie. And it's about them like, you know, sort of trapped in the house, trying to figure out what they're going to do. Why little by little people are like doing that. I'm going feeling really hot and going absolutely insane. But this is one of these like totally insane kind of movies, totally like, it goes to like these insane levels. It's super, super gory, but really, really fun movie. Highly recommend you guys check this one out. This one here is from um, from Cult Films. It's from the company, and this is a uh, you know UK release. Now this one, the Blu-ray is region free, so you guys can watch that one on any Blu-ray player. But the DVD in here, that one's region locked, so that's like you have to have a all region uh, DVD player to play that one or be in the region two region code. Now this one is Dario Argento's Opera. It has a really Really, really cool slip cover on this one and um, I'll show you guys inside too it has the reversible artwork in this one which has um, the original uh, poster artwork or the you know the image you see mo most often for this one on this but this is you know of course directed by Dario Argento and this is probably when it comes to Argento's movies probably my second favorite my first favorite is always going to be Suspiria but then I would say this one and this one, I don't know, everything about this, the way this one is shot, I really, really love the music in this movie. It's just such a great movie. It's essentially, though, about this... Um this opera production that's going on and um, somebody is like kind of stalking the opera and people are getting killed and there's like these insane scenes of like um, putting these like little uh, things under people's eyes forcing them to see things it always really really creeps me out these like metal spikes so you can't close your eyes and it's essentially though about this opera you know and it's having all sorts of problems because of it and it's also a very trippy movie like the um the meaning to certain things, the things that are going on. It's all mainly about this one woman who is like the star of this of the show there and all the kind of stuff that she's going through. And it's kind of like a whodunit movie too, you know, about who is behind the whole thing. And I, I don't know, I absolutely love this movie, just the way it's shot. The music in this movie is amazing. This has on here a uh, new 2K scan of the movie. Looks really, really good. Really great transfer in this movie. Has on here though, Aria Fee, a bra a, a, Aria Fear, a brand new Ken interview with Dario Argento, visiting uh, his work from a fresh uh, viewpoint, Opera Backstage, which has a uh, period documentary on with Dario Argento on the making of the film, as well as a restoration feature on the process of, you know, the, um, you know, scanning the new ne the negative and, you know, coming up with the brand new uh, transfer on this one. But if you guys have never seen this one, one I would highly, highly recommend you check out. An absolute must watch. So well shot. Like I said, the music in this movie is probably, like I said, when it comes to Argento's films, definitely my second favorite. Now these ones are really cool. These are from um, MVD and S'more Entertainment, and these are the Dick Cavett show. Cavett show, um, and you know. Um 
There's two different ones here. This one is the Volume 1, and this has interviews on here with Robin Williams, Bobcat Goldwaith, uh, Richard Lewis, uh, Gilbert Gottfried. The uh, interview on here with Bobcat is great, though, because it's like that was back when Bobcat Goldwaith was doing his like crazy voice that he did, like the crazy character. And, you know, the Dick Cavett is like real, like weirded out by the whole thing, and it's like some real awkward kind of stuff is going on. I, I always loved around this period the interviews that Bobcat did because they were always super strange. And he never broke the character, because like now he never does that character anymore. But back then, he was always doing that insane character. And of course, though, it has like the interviews on here. It has, um, uh, you know, uh, Robin Williams ones are from 1979. The Bobcat Goldwaith one is from 1992. Richard Lewis one is from 1990. Gilbert Godfrey is from 1990 as well. Always love Gilbert Godfrey interviews, especially Robin Williams. So really great people on this one. So definitely a cool volume. And this one here is... Um, uh, and that's the way, it, this is the greatest newscasters of the 20th century. This has uh, Walter Con Cronkite, uh, Mike Wallace, um, it has on here Barbara Wal Walters, Dan Rather, um, as well as on here Tom Brokaw. So really, really cool. This one is him, like I said, interviewing a lot of the broadcasters in this set. So really cool ones. Hopefully they continue releasing more of these ones, you know, uh, these sets. So these are these are actually, he, uh, Dick Cavett is really great uh, interviewer, actually really, really good show. And this one here, I just want to let you guys know, is available from Time Life. And this is um, CMA Awards Live, The Greatest Moments from 1968 to 2015. This has on here 40 live performances, such as like Johnny uh, Cash on this one. It has um, Unforgettable uh, Country Music Award moments, including Lionel Richie, um, as well as uh, Vince Gill. So lots and lots of interviews on here, bonus interviews with country stars. Like I said, just want to let you guys know that this one is available here. But anyway, though, guys, that's all for the review portion of this video. Thanks again for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you guys later. Bye. But before we go, I got sent recently a new BAM box to show you guys. So take a look inside at what's in here. I'll have a link below though where you guys can find out about where to order the BAM box and everything. So let's see what's in here. Now the first thing in here, now this is really cool. This is the, I've seen ones of this in the past, but this is like the biggest one that I've seen. And this is the uh, key from the Goonies. It's the replica of the key from the Goonies that they look through to find, you know, where they go to find the treasure. That's really cool. I had one of these years ago. It was much smaller than this. This is very cool. And there's a um, pin in here. I don't know which movie this is for. I have to look inside the paper to see what movie this is from. No, that, this is from um, Elf. That's, yeah, um, Zoe Dressinow's character from Elf. And then there's a button here for um, the penguin for mayor. That's cool. And then usually there's like autographs and stuff in here. There's like a print here for Die Hard. That's very cool. You know, there's always like arguments. They were talking on the news about like, you know, is Die Hard a Christmas film? There's, only, there's always so many arguments about that, if it is or it isn't. And then there is an autograph here of um, re-elect um, Goldie Wilson, you know, from Back to the Future. So that's an autograph from the actor who played the mayor in Back to the Future. That's actually very cool. I, I always like that they include autographs and things like that in their BAM boxes. And it shows you in here um, some of the stuff that's in here, limited edition. So I guess like um, there's different editions of the Die Hard print and there's different um, pins. So the Zoe uh, Desch Dressinelle one for Elf was actually one of the limited ones. That was only 250 of that one. And then there's one, there's a, the other one is 99 pins. So there's alternate different pins and things that are in here. So that's just very cool. Like I said, just want to show you guys a little look at the latest uh, BAM box here.